Hello, everybody. I am Ravi Kumar from the Partner Sales Engineering Team here at Snowflake. Here at Snowflake, I manage the technical relationship for all the partners' governance, security, and observability. In this video, I'll talk about how Snowflake Horizon helps and enables customers to secure and govern their most important assets, their data. And we'll focus on the data engineer persona. But before we jump in, let's take a fictitious company that's looking to apply governance across their enterprise assets, understand their challenges and objectives, and explore how Snowflake Horizon can really help them. Acme Corp. Acme is a fictitious drug manufacturing company from one of the regulated industries, life sciences and healthcare. They use Snowflake as their data cloud platform for most of their data needs. Their stakeholders that deal with data like this chief data officer and the governance committee are tasked with ensuring that their data, AI models, applications, and all other important assets are managed effectively and must ensure that the quality, security, and the compliance are ensured. At the same time, it shouldn't cause the consumers having to jump through hoops to get to it. Some of their key objectives that uh, they are accountable for are shown uh, here as well, like privacy, visibility, preventing silos, etc. So how does Snowflake ensure that the data is indeed uh, compliant and protected? Snowflake enables Acme Corp to unify all their data across the systems, understand the data by discovering, classifying, and enriching data, and also secure the data, allowing Acme to govern their entire data and AI estate. With Snowflake, AI um, Acme Corp will be able to govern the data and assets across all the workloads that are deployed on Snowflake, including SQL and analytics, apps, AI and ML, Snowpark and data engineering. So let's see how Snowflake does it. Snowflake Horizon. Horizon is a built-in solution that provides capabilities across five pillars. Compliance. As part of compliance, Snowflake has comprehensive certifications including FedRAMP Moderate, FedRAMP High, SOC 1, and many more. It enables Acme Corp to monitor data quality with both out-of-the-box and custom metrics. It enables business continuity where Acme Corp uh, can replicate and fill over databases, shares, role-based access controls, and uh, a lot more across regions and uh, all the hyperscalers, AWS, Azure, and GCP. The second pillar, security. Uh, features from security pillar, Acme Corp can actually secure the data with many of the capabilities enabled by Snowflake Horizon, such as encryption, authentication, network policies, database roles, tri secret secure, um, a lot more. And of course, the newly introduced Trust Center. So Trust Center is our newest capability that detects vulnerabilities and violations as defined by the Center for Internet Security, CIS for short. Let's look at the privacy uh, pillar. With features as part of the privacy pillar, Acme Corp can unlock the value of their data that is sensitive and with advanced privacy policies and data clean rules. Interoperability. With interoperability, Acme Corp can maximize their uh, existing data investments and better manage their uh, entire data estate by using, the, uh, using this pillar. But there are so many pre-built Snowflake integrations by our leading partners across data governance, security, and observability uh, space. Further, Acme can also use iceberg tables that makes Snowflake very flexible. So Acme and other customers can easily leverage Snowflake's performance and features for data they prefer to store outside the platform. Access pillar. And so finally, the access pillar. Customers can easily discover, classify, and share the data, enabling them to act immediately, right? There are several features here, uh, which are like universal search, an LLM-powered search tool to quickly discover and access relevant data and apps across databases, tables, views, schema, procedures, and more. Data and app sharing. You can share direct access to live data and native applications across accounts, regions, and clouds without ever having to do additional ETL or integration work. Copilot. This is LLM powered, where an analyst can ask a question and it'll write a SQL query using the relevant tables. And finally, the marketplace. Let's you share apps, um, data, and uh, models. Let's look at Snowflake Horizon in action and see how it helps the various personas at Acme that deal with the data when it comes to governance. On the left, you see all the typical personas, and on the right, you see the governance workflow. A data engineer would focus on getting the data loaded into Snowflake, and in addition, also ensure that the quality of the data is good and have it sent back to the source if it requires remediation. 
Typically, this would involve activities like data profiling, cleansing, standardizing, etc. Now, once the data is loaded, a data governor, data steward, identifies and remediates any issues from a business perspective. Are there duplicates in the data? Is the data conforming to governance rules, etc.? Now, going forward, a data consumer or an owner would then consume the data for their business needs. And finally, the IT admin would be responsible to ensure that the data is absolutely secure. And in addition, here are some of the responsibilities within the purview of each person. Now, having said that, let's see how the various capabilities from Snowflake Horizon that you see on the bottom enables governance across this flow. Okay, so as you can see, the various capabilities from Snowflake Horizon can be applied to every single step of the governance. Now, while this is a typical workflow, it can absolutely be applied to a more complex workflow as well. And as part of this demo, we'll be focusing on the data engineer persona. So let's jump into the demo. A data engineer plays a crucial role in governance as they're responsible for designing and implementing data pipelines that ensure data quality, integrity, and compliance with governance policies. In this demo, let's see how Snowflake Horizon enables the data engineer to secure the data based on RBAC privileges and being interoperable with iceberg tables in external cloud storage. So as you can see here, I am on the customer table, okay? Now, I'm gonna look at the various columns in this table. Um, I have birth date, city, uh, so, you know, you can see there are a lot of demographic details, a lot of sensitive attributes as well, like social security number, uh, credit card, and a lot of information here, right? Now, there are a number of different ways to load data into Snowflake. You can load the data via batch or micro batch using Snowpipe or load the data in near real time via streaming. There are a number of resources out there that can walk you through all these techniques. But for this demo, I'm gonna be doing is I'll be loading data directly from the SnowSite UI, which is right here. So let's go do that. I'm gonna click on the load data and I'm gonna select a warehouse. And as you can see, it throws me an error. It says this role cannot load the data into customer, check the privileges. Now, let me cancel out of it. Now, if you see in the lower left corner, it's telling me what role am I using, right? I'm using analyst read-only role. So let's click on the table details tab here, which kind of gives me the definition of this table, which is right here. And if I scroll down, it gives me all the various roles and their privileges. And as you can see, the current role, which is analyst read-only role, as only a select. So this is how Snowflake applies the RBAC, ensuring that the right roles get the right privileges, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and switch to a data engineer role. Now the data engineer role, the way I've set it up, has multiple privileges, as you can see here. As you can see here, right? It's got insert and select and a lot of other privileges on that table. So what I'm gonna do next is, again, go to the load data I'm gonna browse the files and I'll be loading the CSV file right here. All, well, absolutely you can do this programmatically as you're very aware, but I'm gonna be doing this through SnowSide to show how easy it is to load the data. All right, I'm gonna click next and you can see, uh, you can you can uh, select the type of the file, the delimiter, etc. I'm gonna skip the first line as I have headers and I'm gonna be loading the data. Okay, there we go, 1,000 rows loaded. I'm gonna click on done. So this gives a good preview of the data itself, right? I can look at all the data here. As you can see, the data has been loaded into the Snowflake table customer within the schema data, within the database DG underscore DB. Now, as I scroll to the right, while I can see the data, I also notice that there are many PII fields that are clear text, right? I can see the email, I can see the social security number as an example. I can see date of birth, right? I scroll further right, there are sensitive fields here like credit card number. So we definitely have to apply proper governance policies to ensure that the PII and other sensitive data is not exposed to unintended audience. We'll do that in another video. Now, as a data engineer, I have loaded the data. Now let's say I'd like to export the data. 
and export the data to Iceberg. So as you might be aware, an Iceberg table uses Apache Iceberg open table format specification. And Iceberg tables are first-class Snowflake objects. Um, and data and metadata files are stored on external cloud storage location. Okay, so without further ado, let's see how I would be able to do that. I'm gonna go switch to another tab, and here we go. So I'm gonna be setting my context, basically using the right role, database, and warehouse. Okay, I'll set that role. And for to create an iceberg table, I would have to first create an external volume. I'm not gonna be running this because I would have to re reset the whole thing, but essentially it's basically saying I'm creating an external volume using this ARN and this S3 bucket location, okay? Now, if I go to that location, if you notice, it's Ravi Kuma 2003 Spock S3 bucket and patients iceberg, which is exactly this place and it's basically empty at this point, okay? All right, let me switch back. All right, let me make sure that the external volume is created correctly. Yep, it's basically created appropriately and it's active at this point. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'd like to export the data from the table we just loaded, which is customer table. Let me make sure there is data in the table, sure enough. Now, all I'm gonna be doing is running this table, uh, create an iceberg table by running this command, which looks very similar to a typical uh, create table, except the iceberg verb that you might have noticed. So I'm basically creating an iceberg table, patient export iceberg. The catalog is gonna be Snowflake in the external volume that I just created and the actual SQL that I like to have to export the data. Here we go. I'm exporting the data and boom, done. You can look at the performance pretty fast. Now I'm gonna go back to the S3, refresh it, make sure that the data has indeed loaded. Yes, here we go, All right? So if I look at the LC2 folders, I click on the first one, that's the actual data in the parquet format, right? Come back and look at the patient folder here, which is the metadata, which is exactly how iceberg data is stored. Now, what's interesting is going to be I'll retrieve the data from the iceberg table. So here you go. This is directly querying the iceberg table from the external storage. And that's not it, right? So I see the second row here, which is 986 ID. The last name is Robles. I'd like to update that. There you go. So I'm basically updating the iceberg table, right? And let's say if I select star again, I see that that uh, particular record has been now updated. I'm using the Snowflake compute engine on the external iceberg table, pretty effective. Okay, so as part of data engineer, you also uh, would be responsible for the data quality, right? And in Snowflake, you use data metric functions in short, DMF, to evaluate the data quality. There are two types of data metric functions, system data metric function and custom. System is basically what comes out of the box, and custom metrics are the ones that you can create to measure the quality of your specific data by extending uh, the behavior. Now, before I go further, very quickly, there are four types of system DMFs that allows you to measure the freshness, accuracy, uniqueness, and the volume of the data. All right, let's get into that. All right, so here I'm going to be running, I'm setting the context, and also I'd like to create a separate table so I can do my data quality. So I'm creating a customer underscore DQA, which is data quality analysis table, by selecting all the data. So nothing complicated here, right? But what's interesting is this. I'm creating a data metric schedule for five minutes, which is absolutely configurable for the data quality analysis table, right? So if I said this, the data metrics are now constantly gonna be running every five minutes and measuring the data, right? Now let's define the actual data metrics itself. I'm gonna be using the accuracy and the unique categories system DMF. All right, so once I come here, um, it's a simple command where I'm saying on this table, which is the DQ table we just created, add the data metric function, snowflake core, null count, right? It basically tracks how many nulls are there. There we go. Also, um, I'm gonna be saying how many unique counts on email and in the in general for the entire row itself. Okay, so I'm gonna be creating these two DMS as well. Okay, done. 
All right, let's create a custom DMF and then uh, look at the actual metrics. Now, what we just did is uh, look at the system DMFs. Now, I would like to extend that functionality by creating a custom data metric function. In this case, I'm creating a very simple uh, custom metric, which is what should my um, email um, signature should look like, right? So a bunch of characters and then an at the rate sign and then some, you know, a domain.com or AI or whatever, right? So I'm going to be creating that data metric function. I'd like to do a test to see if there's any data within my data set that is invalid. Yep, there are 37 records that is currently invalid. Okay, so I'm going to be applying this data metric function that I just created here on the email field to the data quality DQA table. All right, I'm going to be running that table. I have associated with it. All right, so now associated a bunch of system DMFs and custom DMFs. Let's make sure that they're all indeed set up and they have started. Here we go. Here are the four uh, data quality metrics that are running and they have already started. They're running, the, if you look, you know, this resembles like a cron job every running every five minutes. There are two ways to look at the data. One is, if you look at this particular view, data quality monitoring results raw, it gives you the raw metrics, which you would have to obviously, you know, they're, they're JSON, uh, the variant fields, you would have to like basically take it and uh, break them down, or there's a structured data also presented, uh, which, which is much easier to consume. Okay, here you can see that a lot of metrics that have been captured over time, and what I'm interested in is for the table customer underscore DQA, how many metrics are already captured for invalid email counts? Let's run that command. Okay, so as you can see, there are, you know it's been running for quite some time, and I see that this is the metric name and the value, which is the number of invalid email accounts being captured every time the metric runs. So typically, you could run it like uh, once every day, right, and and get a good sense of what's the hygiene of your email. Let's review what we have done so far. We have seen Horizon from the lens of a data engineer. So far, we have discussed loading the table and applying RBAC and privileges, exporting to Iceberg and monitoring the quality of the data. We hope you liked the demo. Check out our other videos as well to see how Snowflake Horizon helps other personas that interact with data. Thank you.